good YouTube man showing up back with a, another banger man I'm not gonna lie I was recording another video but I kind of scrapped it cuz I didn't really like how it was coming out but Ultraman kill count if y'all want to still see Ultraman kill count kill count let me know in the comment section below I was recording it but I didn't like it, so I scrapped it but if y'all want to see it I'll do it but anyways yeah man Ultraman uh, today we have the media that Ultraman inspired shout out to the person who uh sent this to me in my discord like i think earlier today actually so i'm reacting to this and sorry to my people my uh common writer fans or my common writer uh people hey man look hey i'm dropping episode one of geese tomorrow i'm supposed to drop it today things happen it'll be here tomorrow i love and appreciate every single one y'all let's get straight to the video my name is shana don welcome to the don crew you feel me and i was saying welcome 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 hey uh okay Their okay. As much a part of the national fabric as Fury Kake and Chopsticks. Okay. Or, according to Hayao Miyazaki, it's an institution that helped to ruin an entire generation of Japanese youth. Regardless Chill. Which take you go with, there's Why no ruin? The immense impact of the Ultra series. Japanese media is filled with countless tributes and parodies to the pop culture juggernaut. Bulma from Dragon Ball uses the attacks of Ultra Seven, as does Aqua in the second season of Konosuba. God's blessing. Konosuba. The title credits of 1999's Digimon Adventure resembles the monster silhouettes from the opening credits of the early Ultraman shows. Damn, the screen that's the tough. Characters doing the iconic Ultraman transformation pose, and Greymon seems to have taken a cue or two from Gamora. And even Godzilla once struck an Ultraman pose. Not for a chill, 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 chill. My boy Godzilla. And Godzuki. My fault. Have you ever watched the animated Godzilla movies? Way big from Ben 10 is a reference Bro. to the series. Does way big species being Tokustar sound familiar? Tokusatsu, anyone? But minor nods or jokes are not the focus here. Today it's so crazy because somebody told me that uh, that Ben 10's way big was influenced by Ultraman in one of my videos because I think in one of my videos I said something like bro who is this name like you know me I just be saying shit bro like you know what I'm saying just reacting that's what I'm supposed to do and like I'm just saying shit I'm like damn it looks like way big he was like yeah they got way big got inspired by him I'm like bro that's so tough so it's like I definitely feel like this is a proper video to react to for sure it will be looking exclusively it's only right it just makes sense chat amount of influence from the Ultra series. let's get this started okay but let's do it my boy I like the intro W video so far if you believe Pokemon Mastermind Toshi Tajiri only drew influence from bug catching to create the biggest media franchise in the world today. Because you lie. Yeah, During of course. In a November 1999 interview with Time Magazine, Tajiri said the following, I'm part of the first generation who grew up with manga and anime, you know, after Godzilla. I was absorbed with Ultraman on TV and in manga. The profession of game designer was created really recently. If it didn't exist, I'd probably be making anime. He continued, Places to catch insects are rare because of urbanization. Kids play inside their homes now. And a lot had forgotten about catching insects. So had I. When I was making games, something clicked, and I decided to make a game with that concept. Everything I did as a kid is kind of rolled into one. Damn, that's Pokemon so games, tough, bro. Video games, watching TV, Ultraman with his capsule monster. They all became ingredients for the game. I'm going to say something right here, like in a break. So, the, I love these videos because I can actually talk to y'all and break it down. So, I actually love, like, y'all know I love anime, like, Bro, the thing is, it's like everything, like everything, it's like nothing new, there's nothing new under the sun. Like every, something that you love was inspired by something that a generation before you, like love too, you know what I'm saying? Everything inspires each other and like helps, it, you know, if that makes sense. So it's like, I love just seeing popular things that we love now, like the things that inspired that. Like, that's so dope. I love it. I just love creative. Creative. I love it. I just love it, bro. The creative process. Before running into copyright, that shit made me want to play Pokemon. To be called Capsule Monsters, something reflected in the earliest concept material. That's so tough, Capsule bro. Capsule Monsters is the same name as the characters in 1967's Ultra Seven. In said show, okay. and the alter ego of Ultra Seven carried around capsules which contained creatures he could summon to fight his battles. Okay. Bro, life is a beautiful thing. You gotta appreciate creation. And how far it's come, bro, and how far it's still gonna keep going, like forever. It's like so W. <laughs> hey, Although chill. Shown to have more capsules, and in other media, he uses additional monsters. Damn, my headset dying. Three monsters. Hold on, chat. Oh, my headset dying. My headset dying, chat. Oh, you know I don't cut nothing on my videos. Y'all know I don't cut nothing on my videos. 
Y'all know I don't cut none of my videos. All right, I'm back. But yeah, let's, let's get back to it. My bad, y'all. My headset start beeping. Y'all know what that means. Hey. But wait, there's more. At least some okay. Pokemon seem to draw a great deal of influence from Ultra Monsters. To name a few examples, Golem and Rhydon look an awful lot like two enemies from Return of Ultraman, Tatcon, and Sigarath. While other kaiju properties, like the Godzilla that boy don't stop beeping. have influenced Pokemon too, when it comes to Tokusatsu, nothing else compares to what the Ultra series did for Pokemon. <clears throat> Need another okay. example or two? No, we don't, bro. We already stamped that. He didn't make it out his mouth. That's what you feel me? That's so dope, though. Y'all know Pokemon took the world took the world by storm, bro. I didn't even like Pokemon like that, and I know that everybody knows that. Okay. In the years since, has gone on to receive additional manga adaptations as well as two anime adaptations. Okay. Those being an OVA series in the late '90s and a two-season television series in the late 2000s. Okay. While, to my knowledge, there are no hard sources linking Birdie the Mighty to Ultraman. The influence seems undeniable. Plus, okay. Birdie the Mighty series creator Masami Yuki would have been a child during the kaiju boom of both the late 60s and early 70s, the perfect age for media like Ultraman to leave a strong impression. Okay. Birdie the Mighty was inspired by any specific Ultra property. It is almost certainly the original Ultraman, because while Ultraman reviving dead Earthlings is commonplace throughout the series, the hero being responsible for the death of a human is unique to the original show. Here's how it goes. Ultraman, as introduced okay. in the first episode of the 1966 show, uh -huh. was a space officer chasing a runaway criminal. The pursuit okay. led him to Earth, and during this pursuit... I actually seen this in a Kill Count video. Like I said, if y'all want to see the Ultraman Kill Count video, 1966 through 1967, I might just drop it anyways, but now that I'm watching this video, it's going to hit different. Shin Hayata. To make amends for his mistake, Ultraman merges his life force with Hayata. This allows Hayata to carry on with his life as usual. But in times of trouble, such as when giant monsters or aliens are at large, he okay. can use the beta capsule to become Ultraman. Much like Ultraman, Birdie is a space officer who accidentally kills a human while in pursuit of a criminal, Sinkawa in her case. And like Ultraman, to amend for her mistakes, Birdie merges her life force with Sinkawa, and from that point on, they are two minds within one body. Just like the relationship between Ultraman and Hayata, Sinkawa can transform into Birdie whenever the going gets rough, like when battling one of the mini aliens or robot baddies. Beyond obvious differences like Birdie being... He could turn into a bad bitch at will? ...where things diverge. I ain't gonna lie, bro. Uh -huh. That's kind of dangerous, gang. Of ...two characters sharing a body. Nah, In Birdie the Mighty, the dynamic between Birdie and Sinkawa is one of the most prominent features. Bro. It truly helps to make the series its own thing. Is that not like a W like thing? Countless other influences and is very much his own beast. Yeah, people Still, talk about Neon Genesis too. One of the biggest sources of inspiration for Evangelion. Series creator yeah. Hideaki Anno once said he wouldn't be doing what he yeah. does today without Ultraman. The entire concept of a military organization defending the world against aliens and monsters, the core within time limits of the I might take that out. Do y'all want to see me watch some of that? Direction can all be traced directly back to Ultraman. Zerulel, okay. the 14th angel, is without a doubt based on the final enemy of Ultraman, Zetan. And maybe Anno's fixation with crosses in Christianity started with Ultraman. Ultraman's okay. signature pose resembles a cross, and plenty of other Christian elements can be found throughout the series. Okay. This is normally attributed to the Catholic faith of series creator and master of Japanese special effects, Eiji Tsuburaya. Rebuild of Evangelion drives the Ultra influence home further. Like the Science Patrol and Ultraman, My boy did his homework, bro. Adore cackle as a ringtone. In the second rebuild film, Misato drives the same type of cars that the monster attack team does in Return of Ultraman, and the number on her front license plate is the year that Return of Ultraman made its debut. In the same film, the Giants of Light resemble the Ultra Brothers, and the signs of Ultra can be seen on the floor during the preview scene at the end. Last but not least, the logo for Ano Studio, Studio Kara, is accompanied by the Ultraman transformation sound effect. Man, that's so dope, bro. I love this, bro. This is cool, man. This, this is dope, probably bro. probably shouldn't be too surprising for the man who played Ultraman twice in fan films during his college years and recently <laughs> wrote and produced Shin Ultraman, an official Ultra production. Hey, I, hey, my boy. <laughs> He was a manga short and shit though, ain't he? This video only covers a small selection of the media that the Ultra series has okay. inspired since its mid-60s debut. There okay. are numerous other examples of the influence of the Ultra series on Japanese media and international pop culture. So, which of the properties <laughs> That's dope. here is your favorite? Or what's something that wasn't included in the video? Share That's your dope. thoughts below and if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it, give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. Your support is appreciated and hopefully we'll see you next time. Until then, take care. W video, my brother. W video. Let me check out a few comments real quick.
To all the Dragon Ball fans, my bad. Why? Oh, he okay. He he mistake Bomber for Chichi and shit. Okay, okay. <laughs> hey, bro said every time I see something that's clearly inspired by Ultraman, I get up and point like a caveman. Without Ultraman, none of these classes would exist, bro. Bro, it's like, bro. It's just, it's just so much stuff I love about media, and I'm not going to really rant, because I don't, that's not this kind of video, but I feel like these kind of, like, more chill, laid-back videos, it's like, bro, that's really a, a thing that I think people that, like, are borderline into, like, anime or even television and things like that in general, is, like, y'all don't, they don't see the deep roots, like he said, like, one, one comment says, like, when I see Ultraman references in something, he'd get up and point, which is funny, because, like, for me, It'd be like different stuff. Obviously, I didn't watch Ultraman. I wasn't born in the 60s and 70s, bro. Like, or I, I don't know. Like, you know, I'm not really hip to that. Like, I really just got put on the Ultraman thanks to you guys in the comment section, really. And it's like cool to see how much stuff that I love and grew up watching was inspired by Ultraman and probably wouldn't even exist if Ultraman had not done what it done and been what it had been. So it's kind of help you appreciate older, older things. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of like it's yes, yeah, outdated, but it's like it's still monumental. It's still holds his weight because of like how much of a how much of an influence it left on the things at the pre uh not the predecessors but you know what i'm saying the generation after like so i really think that's dope and i, I like more y'all definitely comment more videos like that y'all want me to see um that's that's dope man shout out to the person who recommended this like i said if there's anything you guys want to react to either put it in the comment section or like the person who video we're reacting to today put it in my uh discord she this person actually sent me a whole playlist so I'm going to go video by video. But with that being said, I love and appreciate every single one of you guys, like, dearly. You know what I'm saying? I already know that, though. My name is Shonda Don. You can call me Don. I'm just, my name Don, man. Welcome to the Don crew, man. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I hope y'all guys have great eats today. Like, I hope you have a great meal today, bro. I hope you, I hope y'all doing great, man. Really, I hope y'all doing great because I'm doing decent, man. So, that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. I live in a constant state of